Okay, everybody, uh, I am at my lathe now, well, one of four, and I am just going to do something very quickly. Hey, Google, set timer for 15 minutes. All right, 15 minutes, right. starting now. So when that alerts me, we'll end this first video. Well, second one, the first one was the introduction. So what have we here? Well, this is a wood turning lathe, and uh, it's purpose and function is to help wood turners create either decorative items functional items or what you'd call utilitarian items so anything from a chair table stair spindle uh, to uh, balustrades and columns and uh, honey dippers and lots of craft items like say honey dippers and goblets and bowls and platters up to the, the more of the sort of stuff that I do which is uh, wood turning art so countless uses for a wood turning lathe and it all depends on your creativity really but <clears throat> that's a different lesson altogether so what is a wood a, uh, a wood lathe like so this one here it's quite a big one it's an Axminster trade uh, and uh, it is capable in its in its basic configuration of turning a approximately a 16 inch diameter bowl and a spindle approximately 28 inches in length so I have got the optional I'll just slide along here I have got the optional bed extension which will take it out much closer to you know three three feet a little more uh, and also the bed extension can be dropped down and can give you a theoretical approximate 30 inches but a really cool feature of this particular lathe is that the head stock if I just release this lever here and then you can pull out that knob the head top head stock excuse my talking uh, the head stock will swivel and rotate so if you had a, a let's say a floor standing tool rest you would be able to turn something significantly bigger than 30 inches uh, but that's something I haven't done the headstock also slides along the bed so what is the bed the bed is the main uh, carrier of the tail stock which is this here for those of you that have got uh, some vision uh, this bit at the end here it's the tailstock and the tailstock consists of a hand wheel at the end and that will allow the quill which is a piece of uh, cylindrical steel to advance or move backwards uh, and that holds a live center which is I'm just putting one in which is something that fits in and holds with a friction fit it's called a Morse taper and this is a number two size Morse taper on this machine and this center revolves so you will slide the tail stock forward to meet the piece of work whether or not it's a bowl blank or you're turning between centers and you turn it sorry you turn the hand wheel to advance the quill and the live center and that will engage the work and then the tail stock can be clamped in position with a lever and everything can be locked nice and secure and then at the other end opposite you have the spindle so the spindle protrudes out of the main body of the lathe known as the headstock so the spindle is threaded on the outside to accept face plates got one here a face plate which is a method of holding and securing work on a lathe it's also threaded to accept chucks so chuck and jaw systems it's another way of holding work 
so you can make your lathe very adaptable depending on your project and then again the spindle both the spindles sorry both the spindle and the quill are hollow and number two more taper so inside the spindle you can put in drive centers as well so drive centers the one that I've just pushed in there is called a step center which has a little spring-loaded popper in the front very useful great for blind I've just dropped it on the floor blind wood turners are a conventional four prong drive center again depending on the project and the size and how fast you're going to be turning and what you're doing you can just mix these things up to get the best results for you so the spindle thread is what's known as an m33 very common thread on wood turning lathes and you can get a host of accessories that can be mounted to your lathe so on this particular lathe on the front there's a panel here which will read out the rpm the revolutions per minute so that's the speed at which your lathe is turning so uh obviously no use to me and what you will have to do uh, if you have very poor vision is just get tuned in to the speed at which you're working and you will become accustomed to what is the best speed to work with as, as a rule I like to turn as fast as is safe to do so I achieve a much better cut it's it's safer and smoother the cut you're not forcing anything uh, and as I said the headstock can be moved forwards and backwards so can the tailstock to accommodate different sizes of work especially spindle work so uh, on this lathe here it has a indexing function again something you'll get into later so uh, a 36 position index so you can lock the spindle in one of 36 positions and if you're doing uh, precision work or doing clocks and things like that great to use uh, so you can lock that off uh, and then that's the power card now these machines have uh, variable frequency drives and computers uh, make them very quiet they provide good torque and good power right through the rev range but this lathe like so many others even though it is electronic and variable speed let's just see if I can lift this up in here hopefully uh, you can feel the pull is these two ratios on this and you can slacken off the motor and move the belt across so it's like the gears on a on a racer or a mountain bike for heavy work especially when you're starting off you need it to be slow but powerful so you will have it on the largest pulley on not the motor end but the end closest to the spindle sounds complicated but we will explain it more so if you can imagine uh that the the motor end where there's another set of pulleys uh you will need it on the smaller pulley there because if you remember riding a bike if you ever rode a race bike or a mountain bike the bigger the front cog set or set of gears the harder it is to push so conversely on the back the bigger the cog the easier it is to rotate you can put down more power so uh, I'm just trying to simplify it here for complete newbies. So, yeah, it has uh, two pulleys that you can adjust. And that way, I'll screw them back in later. And that way, you've got a, a great rev range from pretty much zero up to three, three and a half thousand, something like that on this machine. And a great feature of this machine uh, it's an Axminster lathe, if I didn't mention that, Axminster trade. And I love these machines because unlike others that have a, a touchpad system, 
for on and off and reverse and speed. Uh, they, they can be infinitely complex for the blind to use. So these have chunky tactile knobs, easy to find. With it being magnetic, you can position it anywhere on the lathe uh, that's safe to do so. And you've got immediate instant access to the controls. So if you need to stop the lathe quickly because there's a bit of a problem, you can do. It's just right there, just literally a hand's length away. So uh, most lathes can be bench mounted. Now, even this lathe, which is big and heavy, can be bench mounted as long as your bench is sturdy enough. But this came with the supplied, not the supplied, this came with the optional cast iron legs. And again, the cast iron legs and the bed extension are optional. I, I specified these when I ordered it from Axminster and it's just great. It stays here. It's never going to be moved, really. And it's just a lot of fun. So uh, it's got a two horsepower motor on the back here, which is computer controlled. And the computer is hidden away in a little box underneath the bedways. So the bedways, again, it's that parallel heavy cast iron section that the tail stock and headstock slide along that is the bed precision ground to ensure perfect alignment and sturdiness this thing weighs a lot you know well over probably 120 kilos uh so yeah it's it can get a wobble on with really big uneven work uh but pretty much steady as you go and uh you could if you wanted to uh, get some roll bolts and uh, drill it into the floor and also you can put uh, a shelf system on you could put extra ballast on bags of sand etc some turners do that so around the back here uh, we've got the wires here that go to the, the well go from the uh, motor to the VFD vice versa and these wires for the control box Lovely machine, love it to bits. Uh, and then quickly, I'll just show you, we have then uh, other MIDI lathes, which are a lot smaller. Uh, my MIDI lathe from Axminster, again, it's another trade one. Got the computer uh, variable frequency drive on it, the same magnetic remote control, uh, and that will handle, handle up to a 14 inch bowl in theory, and 16 inch, uh, in length on the spindle so uh, very capable machine you can do most things on that uh, you wouldn't be able to do full length stair spindles uh, unless you did them in sort of like two parts and be joining them up but that really wouldn't be the way to go i don't think so uh, yeah same functions it doesn't have a swiveling headstock but it has the same number two morse taper so you can get all the same accessories and jaws and chucks and live sensors and drive sensors for that uh, great machine and then quickly moving across here i've got another axminster trade big axminster fan you might, tell, <laughs> might be able to tell i've got a precision pro lathe here and this is very small uh, in comparison and this will probably turn uh, in between centers something like about 10 12 inches at the most but it's really made for small precision work finials uh, pens it's what I use all uh, turn all my pens on uh, dolls house furniture really great laid variable speed again great motor uh, and very tiny uh, and then over the back I'll just quickly move to the first Axminster lathe I got now this has been a great lathe again uh, really happy with it it's only ever needed one dry belt and that's easiest to access on this craft uh lathe although it was called the hobby lathe back in the day it's now been rebranded as a craft lathe it's only ever needed one dry belt uh and uh i think you can start the the lathes in the craft range at about 300 pound please uh go on the website and uh, get your prices right. But there is really a lathe out there for all budgets, starting from a few hundred pound, right up to the my bigger trade lathe, which is about two and a half thousand with all the kit. And then you can go much, much greater than that. You can spend many, many thousands on a lathe, depending on what you want, your requirements, your budget. You know, uh, they can have different features, but they all have the same common features headstock tailstock bed on off 
uh, most of them are variable speed now and some have forward and reverse uh, but yeah it's a great hobby so absolutely love it and you won't go far wrong uh, with uh, an Axminster craft lathe if that's uh, where your budget lies remember uh, hey Google stop just remember that on a tiny lathe you can only do small stuff but on a big lathe you can do big stuff and small stuff too so I have to sorry I don't understand hey Google stop there you go anyway I need to wrap up now uh, but we can continue on episode two uh, and we're going to discuss health and safety equipment uh, you know, this is how I did it. There's a long way to go before you even get your hands on a machine. So uh, thanks for listening to that introduction to a lathe, what it is and what it does. Uh, and I'll be back uh, hopefully in a few days to do part two, which will be health and safety and PPE. Thanks a lot, everyone.